baseball show. Today is, I always check my watch right before we start recording, Friday, October 15th. We're doing an ALCS preview. It's the Red Sox and Astros, but something is unique that hasn't happened in about 82 episodes. Peter's uh, wearing a hoodie. I'm wearing a hoodie. <laughs> okay, so when we went to dinner, Peter had his hood up like a jackass outside the restaurant. I was like, what the hell is he doing? It was slightly cold. Okay. It's not it also... It was 70 degrees. I think... I'll show the camera this. The look of like a hoodie, like kind of off, just chilling. Very cool, laid back look. It looks hot. So not only am I a little bit warmer, yeah, a little bit more laid back. Yeah. This, this episode, this episode might be best taken in via YouTube. Go to our YouTube. We're trying to grow the <laughs> subscriber list here. Just baseball. Uh, I decided to come out to New York because these two wouldn't make the concession of coming to the Midwest. Whether, Fort Wayne, Indiana. I think it, I think it makes sense. I don't know, it, it costs a lot more to live here in Manhattan <laughs> than Fort Wayne, Indiana, but uh, I'm sitting with these two. I didn't get catfished by either of them. You look like you do on Zoom. You look like you do on Zoom. I just looked at Aram first, Peter second. <laughs> Still got to cater to the audio crowd. Uh, this is fun to be sandwiched in between you guys. Also, get our first look at our unsung hero, Will Cohen, here, too. Behind the camera. Right behind the cam today. Will, hold on, before we get into actual baseball. No, no, I wasn't even going to ask baseball. Yeah. I just generally want to ask you because you said when you visited New York, yeah, you said every single time I come here, I like it less and less. <laughs> so I'd like to ask you what you really don't like about New York City. Oh, I thought we were doing a 30-minute episode. I got to. I get to. Yeah, I got yeah, to. You get to jump in. Too. All right, you go first. Uh, um, no, I'm actually going to turn the floor to you, but I want to praise Cohen for a moment. Will Cohen is the unsung hero of just baseball because Absolutely. this dude has been cutting video and putting all of it on TikTok. We literally just send him the podcast and be like, choose what you like and put it out on TikTok. And you guys have fallen in love with just baseball TikTok. And that's all thanks to Will Cohen. So there's that, right? Clap it up for my boy. Round of applause there. Uh, this almost feels like a live show. But to answer your question, why I like New York less and less. I've yeah. got a lot of family here. New York's got a soft spot. But I think Aram summed it up best in a 59-second voice memo that he sent to me. <laughs> well, I want you to walk through this. Okay. Well, the concept – well, it's a failed social experiment, right? <laughs> like, that's 100% what, what it is, right? The concept of – let's take – how many square miles is New York? I think it's a 12-mile island with around 8 million people. <laughs> okay. So think Give about take. that. <laughs> yeah. It's a and Brooklyn has more people. It's a human ant maze, ant farm, whatever you want to call it. People just packed like sardines, and there's no way that's healthy. The trash is in the street. We just—that's normal too. That's normal. Like, oh, trash is done for the day. Yas it into Can the I street. Add fuel Who to your made fire? that normal? Can I add fuel to your fire? Not only do we have eight million people, but remember my rat king phenomenon. Yeah. yeah. We have more rats living under Manhattan than we do people on top you of Manhattan. The, where their tails get tied together, the rat king shit. Yeah. Exactly. My sister told me about that. I haven't slept since. I, yeah. <laughs> that Between that and the, the ground rule double in the Red Sox yeah. Rays game, <laughs> and the, both of those like haunt me together. Yeah. And so that, uh, like the rat king thing, right? There's three million estimated rats in New York City. So I think, think there's about, way more. And there's there's got to be more. Way more. There's about that many outside of my apartment. I way, promise. Yeah, way, yeah, way, I more. Promise. way more. I promise. Way more. I see him in the subway. I'm like, oh, he's hitching a ride to my apartment because they're <laughs> all right outside of <laughs> And it. they're not afraid of you either. No, they're they, domesticated. They're like, I'm, I'm going to work just like you are. I deserve part of the sidewalk. <laughs> yes. And, but there are some great things about New York. I'm not there yet, though. Okay. All right, Let continue. Me finish continue. Up. continue. Uh -huh. The last thing I want to say about the rats is, and I said this to Jack in the voice, my mom said it, then I don't say it again. When has rats and human beings, that, that's, those usually don't go well together, right? No. Like, we almost don't They've exist because friends. of rats. They've never been friends. Exhibit A, the Black Plague. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a decent Exhibit A. Yeah. So let's talk about some of the positives of New York okay. City. Okay. The Mets. I love New York City, by the, the way. The Mets. <laughs> the Mets. Uh, the Yankees occasionally. Not even them. <laughs> were, let's talk about actual New York City okay. because the two teams playing in it were the most disappointing yeah. in the world unbelievable juice and smoothie selection here that's a crazy thing that that's the first thing you think yeah about. that's 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 out of my mind it's so good well it is you're right but that's the first okay you know can what? we pitch joe and the juice it's how awesome. about this you can basically do anything you want in new york city yeah that's like, the cool part yeah. it, it, um, an hour away to the beach i have the east river right around the corner you yeah. can do, do the walk around the water then any bar any club any sporting event like 
it is the one place in the world. It's the capital of the world. You can do anything you really want to on this 12 mile island okay. of Manhattan. I'm going to tell you the one thing you can't do. Tell me. Sit in silence. It's impossible. All right, you got me there. Peace and quiet is In your impossible. own apartment. Just chill in your own apartment. Uh, the outside Are you sirens. kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Within the next five minutes, there's going to be sirens. There's going to be something crazy. Every time. It's guaranteed. And it's, and it's funny. We were talking about this was going to be a 30-minute episode about Astros Red Sox, but it might be two and a half hours of us <laughs> yeah, just talking I'm about just Rat talking. Kingdoms. No, but what is cool is that, like you said, I can walk out of my apartment, and I know if I walk in one direction, I'll get to what I need. Like, yeah. I will find something. That's the thing. We literally, I had a conversation with my roommate because I needed to go to, a, like, a city bank. I was like, is there one near us? And he's like, I think there's one within a mile. I map it. No matter what. 80 feet away. Yep. I didn't even know it was there. Yeah. Like, that's that's really cool. Within a mile radius, you can kind of do anything. There's a want. cool New York City camaraderie, too, of just, like, people. Just be, I, Growing up in South Florida, people aren't very friendly. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I know there's, like, a different level of not friendly here. This but is a different yeah. level because this is almost like, it's not that I'm being not friendly. I'm just not talking to you. Okay, you know who's the least friendly here are the people that aren't actually from Manhattan. Yes. They're the people that move in and feel like they need to fit the narrative of being jackasses. Same thing with L.A. Yeah, L.A. is like a pit because of all these people that come and want to be stars and have this idea that they should be. So they have this idea that, I guess, like L.A., that they deserve something, kind of like the Yankees, that they don't deserve anything. Right. Right. And Nashville. I got to bring it back to the Yankees, of course. Well, Nashville is quickly becoming that, too. Um, Listen, (laughs) we're recording uh, at 8 p.m. The amazing game that we are anticipating that goes about six and a half hours uh, is happening in an hour. So we're going to get off before Giants Dodgers game five. We're going to give you the first of our two championship series previews. We're going to give you Red Sox Astros right now. And then tomorrow you will hear. Uh, a Giants slash Dodgers, and who's the other one? I forgot because this series is occupying the entirety of my brain. It's Atlanta the Braves. Braves. Who you guys both had? And we both had the Atlanta Braves, and you did not. But also, we got to talk about your White Sox because we haven't gotten the chance to shoot the shit about the White Sox. Arm and I were. Yeah. But we'd like to ask you, yeah. you know, a few questions. We ended it last time. Well, first, give us your initial thoughts, because I have some questions about some players I want your opinion on. My initial thought is a very similar thought to what happened with the Red Sox and the Rays, right? Regardless of what you do, regardless how many times you play the Detroit Tigers, and they're a bad example this year because they're actually good. They were actually good. You know, how many times you play the Minnesota Twins, how many times you play the offensively inept Cleveland Indians, soon to be Cleveland Guardians, like, you have to beat a really good team in a five-game series yes, in do. order to get to a seven-game series. The White Sox couldn't do that. The starters had an ERA over 12. The offense slugged under 400. It's just not a recipe for success there. I didn't like the manager's bullpen management. We talked mm-hmm. about that mm-hmm. on the last podcast. Who's the manager again? Yeah, he's coming back another year. I don't need to say his name because we'll just talk about it next year again. Okay. Yeah. Um, the thing is... I am just looking for that team to win X amount of games in a row. But there's, uh, your, there's your loud noise. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's loud your loud noise out the window. I love New York. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I changed my mind. Yeah, yeah. you really like that. <laughs> so many juices. Um, <laughs> Tony is probably not the right guy to do this. But then again, I just want Ozzy Guillen. And I want one yeah. loss and running to a World Series route. And I'm just not going to get that. Yes, and I think this team, Arm and I were talking about it, more of a testament to the Astros rather than a detriment to the totally, White Sox. Totally. Because the Astros just straight up blitzed them. Yes. They came in with, we were talking about the offense that the Astros have, Kyle Tucker and Yuli Gurriel hitting sixth and seventh, batting title followed up by a top 10 offensive season. This team was just simply better, but I don't think that the White Sox have to really retool anything. No. I mean, Arm, what do you think they would have to do in the offseason to get better? Well, I also want to shift it to you because you picked them to win the World Series. So why are you frustrated? <sighs> yeah, well, I was going to ask you <laughs> when you realized they sucked. Because I realized they sucked in this series. No, I'm kidding. I'll yeah. get into it, actually. So to answer the first question... I agree. They don't need to do too much. Obviously, you make a couple of different moves to kind of satisfy little needs that you have. Eduardo Escobar, like that kind of pickup for like 
who, who picked up Eduardo? Escobar? Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Sorry. Milwaukee picked up Eduardo. I just, Escobar. I just messed that up. <laughs> Cesar Hernandez. Cesar Hernandez. That kind of pick. They're, they're I, the same player. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But Cesar Hernandez. That's a guy that you kind of fill in. That's not somebody that you're expecting to like be able to really carry the load. You traded Nick Madrigal away, so now you got to kind of figure out how you're going to tool up the infield. What I thought the big issue was before I called players the wrong name is <laughs> I don't think they know exactly how they want to use some of their guys. Right? You have Michael yeah. Kopik who's getting stretched out. That we talked about. But, ask but him. are you going to make him a starter or are you going to make him a lights out bullpen arm? Right now he's a swing man, and I don't think it's that's fair to him. That's not. I don't think that's a role he thrives in. Garrett Crochet, he's been a reliever, but they tried to stretch him out at times. I didn't think that was great. Now he's more of like the modern day lefty specialist. Is that what he's good at? He throws 100. I think he can get righties too. Like, how are we deploying him? Uh, I also think that it's impossible to win, even if the starters were good, when the two big bullpen arms you have, which is a big reason why I picked the White Sox, was Tony Larusa is supposedly the big, you know, one of the best game managers, bullpen, bullpen managers, managers that you're going to find. And they had all the weapons in the world. They went out and got Tapera. They went out and got Kimbrel. They had Hendricks from, you know, going into the season. And I'm like, oh, he's going to use these guys fantastic. Yeah. And he didn't. And those guys struggled as well. Tapera was bad. Kimbrel was terrible. And Hendricks even struggled in that last game. So they didn't really have a chance, even if the starters were good or not. I just don't see how they could have survived with all of those things going the wrong way. Uh, but to answer what I think they do next year... Cesar Hernandez is not your answer. I think you got to probably find one more outfielder. You got to find a second baseman, and you can tool up there. But mo- for for the most part, you know they missed a lot of their best players for a lot of the season. I think yeah. people forget that too. Yeah. You have another question. I, my question was more around the Michael Kopech thing, because I I just wanted to know your opinion on what they should do with him because you see an arm like that throwing a hundred miles an hour yeah. with the hook. And with the pedigree that Michael Kopech has, that he wasn't just some random guy who came up throwing 100. He was one of the White Sox that they were going to really get behind. So then why is he a middle reliever bridge guy like a Nick Pavetta when he could be the three or the four or Or a, a legit closer? I just, I don't get it. Yeah, so he's a starter. I think right? this year they were having an identity crisis with Michael Kopech because he was out for so long. What yeah, do you true. have here, right? And with the rotation guys trending the way they were, bringing Rodon back because you didn't know what you had with Kopech, mm-hmm. like there had to be this sort of identity crisis where he was in the bullpen. Same thing as Crochet. I mean, Crochet was nuts at Tennessee. I'm sure you know. And he comes in because he's sitting there idle for two months. He has a fresh arm and he's throwing 100. This year, he's not throwing 100. He's throwing 96. Yeah. Is he a starter that throws 96, or is he a closer that throws 100? Is he a 6'6 lefty freak show that throws 100? Mm -hmm. I want him to be that. I want Kopech to be the three. Like, I think the job actually gets simpler next year because you don't have the money to pay Rodon to stay. So it turns into Lance Lynn is your bona fide one. You don't need to have the Lynn versus... You don't need to have the Lynn versus Giolito conversation. Do you think they need to? What no, do you mean? You keep both. Yeah, you keep both. So you, uh, you're saying you, who's your you, ace? You buffered I, when I said bona fide one for Lance Lynn. Oh, I mean it doesn't matter. They're both they're both your front line guys. Yeah, right. So you have one A, one B. That's fine. But is Lynn going into next year a bona fide one? That's I, I think, think so. that's why he went like this because it's like. How much longer until people adjust to 74 of 76 pitches are variations of fastballs? At when you Maybe have, you just don't. Maybe I don't you think you adjust, adjust to it, but I think that's a regular season. Like, you know, that's the type of guy that succeeds in the regular season in the playoffs. You get blitzed a little bit by a team like the Astros. I'm not trusting a Lance Lynn in the playoffs. I trust Giolito more than I trust Lance Lynn in the postseason. I disagree with you. I trust Lance Lynn against... 28 other teams the 29th was the best fastball hitting team in baseball and that's who they ran into but like for example like uh uh, all the best teams in baseball are are big fastball hitting teams so it's like for example the doggers would crush fastballs giants crush rays socks red socks all these teams are gonna blitz on fastballs yeah i just except for dobbick except for for dobbick Uh, wow, we can't stop shitting on the Red Sox. We can't, and we have to talk Astros Red Sox. We do. That's the whole. That's the title. That's of That's the podcast, title of the right? pod. Yeah. When, when we when we type away and put this thing out, it's Astros versus Red Sox preview. Astros versus Red Sox preview, and yet it's how many minutes have we been in? About 20? Eight, 20 minutes. All right, <laughs> let, then let's break it down. Astros Red Sox. Okay. 
Let's break into Astros Red Sox. We were saying a lot of this was a testament to the Astros and how good the offense is. If I had to put it very simply, the Red Sox have the better rotation and for my money, the better bullpen right now than the Astros. Mm. The Astros have the better offense and the better defense. That's what I say. Separated into the four categories. Rotation, bullpen, offense, defense. Uh, let's go arm first. Okay. Advantage where? Here's my thing. Though. Here, Yeah, we'll both go offense. We'll all do our three and why, and then we'll go through each one. Yeah. Here's my thing is, is we talk about on paper – is one thing, but the way the Red Sox are playing right yeah, now. Yeah, that's the problem. Right, like this Red Sox, of course, on paper, I'm taking the Astros offense, right? Like anybody Led watching, the league and run score. It's the best offense. It's the best offense. They're really good right now. But the Red Sox offense right now is is clicking on all cylinders. You have guys just hitting at ridiculous levels. You figure J.D. Martinez is only going to be healthier. And that's the thing about J.D. is he hit well that series. He had about four, four at least three fly balls that I know if he was healthy would have been gone because he wasn't getting into his lower half at all. He wasn't putting any weight on his legs. He was just throwing his hands at the ball. So JD takes it a step up. You think Devers is maybe feeling a bit better. He looked a lot better in that last game and a half. I think that this Red Sox offense can match the Astros offense run for run, hit for hit with the way they're swinging. I have a question for the both of you. Is it more impressive what the Astros did against the White Sox pitching or is it more impressive what the Red Sox did against the Rays pitching? Because for the Astros... Are you wait? Are you talking about Rays Red Sox? Yeah, I almost think it's Astros White Sox compared to all the runs that the Astros were scoring, because the Red Sox did eventually win, but they weren't scoring in bunches like the Astros were. And I think you can make the argument that the White Sox starting pitching was certainly better than the Rays starting pitching. I think maybe you couldn't make it in the bullpen, but maybe you could with that bullpen. So when I think about that, that the Astros actually scored more runs than the Red Sox did against the Rays. Maybe even on paper, but even if the Red Sox are playing the way they are, the Astros' offense is still, that's where I lean, even if the Red Sox it's are explosive. swinging it. It's explosive. Okay. I mean, both are so good, though. Both are top five. Both are incredible. It's the situational yeah. ability that I'm yeah. seeing from the Sox, too, though. It's like, we didn't really see, maybe the, the Astros will be great at it, but most of those games weren't that close. True, more, right. Like, the Red Sox would impress me. I think you're right. Like The, the Astros made it easy on themselves. They yeah. blitzed every. They, yeah, they that's killed the thing. Them. But the Red Sox, every time they needed a hit, they got it. I, and I, and I like, admittedly, we had I had a lot of money against them every yeah. game. Yeah. So I had this pit in my stomach every time it was a big spot. I knew they were going to come through. Yeah. You know, I knew they were going to come through, and there was that the level. Did it Maybe too, they'll though. do it. That's the thing. That's, but I, it's like they came through. But it's like when they needed, they came through, and then it was over. Oh, wow. Yeah. Did you hear him say he had a lot of money? On yeah. Not. Uh, not gambling uh, advice. Right. Right. No. 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 This was. These, these were, <laughs> I don't even know how to spin that. <laughs> Just not gambling advice. Um, he, here's what I'll say. Very similar to Nicki Minaj's cousin, the Red Sox had massive balls. They had massive balls all series. You've been long. sitting on that one. I, I was, was sitting on that. I was it. like, I'm, he probably thought of that two days ago. He's like, I'm going to fit the shit I've got such a good line. Nicki Minaj. I've got such a good line. Uh, and I'm only like three weeks late. Um, listen, they were playing from behind right away. Right, because game one, everybody said this is sign sealed delivered. Tampa is winning. I tweeted raising three like a piece of shit. Right. Yeah, but I, I did do raising. Everybody three. did. Just Shane McClanahan gave him five he, shutout innings. He tweeted raising two. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I tweeted raising three. Was going to tweet raising two <laughs> after, but re- reserved myself because I was like, well, they were, that just won't end well, no matter what. They Even were, if the Rays won in three, it's still stupid. But think about it. Like, they were on their heels the entire series. Even though they got that big game two win, they went to 13 innings in game three. That's what and I'm saying. And you were thinking, like, Tampa's too good. Yeah. Right? Game four, that thing went deep. And you were thinking, this is this has to go to game five. Tampa's yeah. not a losing four team. The Red Sox were constantly on their heels, and they constantly delivered. And I said it last episode – Math, numbers, fan graphs, savant, the regular season does not matter when you have this weird magic going on. Oh, I, 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 I totally understand. I'm just, I was thinking about when we're talking about just straight offenses, like which offense do we want? I'm still going to side with the Houston Astros, and I think I you two. Oh, so you would both agree. I was like, because I, it was trending to say you guys. Well, are I wanted Red Sox. to try to make the case for the Red Sox, but know, it's so. If we all just said, if we all just said, you know, Astros, Astros, yeah. Astros. So like trying to make the case for the Red Sox, I think you know, in a close game late right now, I feel like they're they're always going to have a chance to come back into it. I think the Astros are the same way though in a lot of ways because, but we expected that from them, right? 
But what's amazing with the Astros is they've been there. I didn't even realize what is it their fifth straight ALCS fifth now. Straight. And I, you can say what about what you want about the cheating and whatever. It's clear that they just rake and they did it this yeah. year. And I mean, Correa said it best. I think. Look at our home road splits this year. Look at what we did at home. Look what we did on the road in the playoffs. Like we're just. Hitters, we mash, and we we know they mash. Except for Bregman's numbers have never quite recovered <laughs> because he can't hit breaking balls. But that's another conspiracy theory. I'll get into another time. <laughs> um, he's still a good hitter. He's still a good player. He's just not not the MVP candidate that he once was that, uh, because that he feels, doesn't know when the breaking ball is coming. Now that feels like an offensive or that feels like an off season conspiracy. Oh, that theory. that's an off season conspiracy. Oh, Arms yeah. conspiracy theories will be it will be a series. <laughs> and that we're, are we partnering with uh, microdosing? That's P, uh, Arian Foster and PFT, right? Barstool. Oh. Oh, what so are they doing? They microdose. microdose. They they have a podcast centered around conspiracy theories. And they microdose. Really? Are they, are they do? Oh, that's crazy. And that's crazy. <laughs> what I do want to take a moment to just give Kyle Tucker oh, yeah. a, how vicious a pat on the back as we could possibly give him. Like, okay, um, so. tell the stat. Yeah. yeah I tell the stat. I said on the last episode. We said the last for, episode. For our new folks on YouTube, especially, uh, I wish I could just like hold up a sign. I think it's so sick. Players with a K rate under 16% and OPS over 900. Obviously, they have to be qualified, which means 500 plate appearances. This means you hit the ball really hard and you're productive and you don't strike out a lot. Sounds like a good combination of things, right? One, Vlad Guerrero Jr. Two, Juan Soto. Three, Kyle Tucker. Four, nobody else. I mean, we That's got crazy company. We got the question, is Kyle Tucker a future MVP candidate? He is an MVP yeah. candidate. That's the crazy Already. part about it. Yeah. And that's and that's not to take anything away from the question. It's just understanding how amazing that this guy is, and he's only going to continue to get better. So I think we all agreed, Astros with a slight lean on offense, starting pitching. I agree with you. I think the combination of Nate Eovaldi and Chris Sale is better than anything that the Astros could throw at you. And Erod looks good in his last start. But the thing is, I'm worried about Erod in the start against the Astros. I'm worried about generally, I'm just worried about Chris Sale, for example, in game one. Right. Game one is Framber Valdez and Chris Sale. Game two is Luis Garcia and Nathan Uvalde. Game three, we assume, is... Okay, now we get into this. And before we do that, Aram brought up YouTube again. I, I told him before we started recording, like, the setup that we have right now, we're <laughs> sitting on a diagonal couch. It feels like that meme of the three, like, 10-year-old kids <laughs> sitting and having a roundtable discussion. Um, it is, literally what's that. What's the caption? It's, it's like three 10-year-old like, kids so- having a roundtable discussion. That's what we're doing. Right. I, we can make the caption, is Kyle Tucker an MVP candidate? Yeah, that that's just the um, name of the pod. It, we can dive into what we've heard about Lance McCullers and his health because game three looks like McCullers and Erod right mm-hmm. now. Um, over. With all, over. <laughs> over. <laughs> with all that being said, there are these two massive weapons that you have brought up, Peter, that the Astros don't have. Oh, and really? that's Nick Pavetta and Tanner Howard. Yeah. Those guys are X factors. Well, Michael they were Kopik, X-factors, what Michael Kopik was supposed what to be. What he should have yeah. been, yes. And 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 just talking about yeah, the Nick Pavetta thing, and we were talking about X Factors, like in the White Sox series, going back to that, we Yasmani Grandal was one of them. He hit 176 in that series. He didn't even walk a, a ridiculous amount either. Yeah. But I guess we're we're getting into the bullpens now. If we're talking Tanner Houck and Nick Pavetta, because what the Red Sox bullpen always struggled with was Matt Barnes didn't seem to be the answer. Garrett Whitlock he had is a very, the answer. Oh yeah, he's the answer. Well, hold on, he has a, he had a very good regular season, but I think the thought was, who knows what yeah. we're gonna get right. from the former Yankees farmhand. But yet now he's a lockdown reliever. Josh Taylor has been impressive too. So. If we're talking starting pitching and bullpen, I do give the lean to the Red Sox. But the Kendall Graveman Presley are the two best relievers out of all of them. Yeah. So that's where you – and then you got the Yimi Garcias of the world. <laughs> Dude, he's a walking home run. Yeah. I, like, I, I'm telling you that he's going to give up some bombs. Oh, yeah. Like, that's Devers what he does. over half a home run against Yimi Garcia. Oh, it's guaranteed. <laughs> Dude, that guy gives up nukes. I, that, I was shocked to see that the Astros. Like, I, I, that's the coolest thing I've done in but the, the history of baseball. Like is a predicting time. a trade. Yeah, you did I actually do that. That's I, I have to plug that whenever I can because that's the craziest thing I've ever done on the Locked On Marlins podcast. When I was hosting that, I literally said I was looking at targets for the Marlins. I was like, we need center, they need center fielder so bad, and I was like, Astros need a reliever, 
and the Marlins will trade him for anything. Maybe the Astros will be willing to give up Brian De La Cruz, a triple A guy that's 24. I said, Yimmy Garcia for De La Cruz straight up. A month later, that exact trade happened. Kind of cool. And I had so many people tweeting at me like, what the hell? And I didn't know. And I looked, I was like, no way. <laughs> that was the craziest thing I've ever said. So sorry for the detour, but that was the coolest thing I've ever done. No. Um, the one thing I wanted to say too, as leading into it, but I just want to make one more point on the offense, is that the Astros, I know the Sox have some guys that have been there for sure, but the Astros... I mean, we tweeted out that stat that Correa is now third all time in Major League history in league championships or, or division series, excuse me, in RBI. I mean, that's insane. With the likes of Derek Jeter, with the likes of a lot of the best players, you know, ever, and, and much less at bats. So, like, they have a lot of guys that have been there. Altuve's there, like Brantley. I just trust those guys a lot. I, on the flip side, of course, the Red Sox have guys that you trust, but they also have some young guys that you don't. On the pitching side of things, too. I, I think it's the other side. Like the Red Sox, I trust a lot of their starting pitching arms a lot more than I trust the Astros arms. Like Lance McCullers, I trust if he's healthy. If he's healthy. I don't trust Luis Garcia right now. I think he's a great pitcher with a great career ahead, but I don't, like, I'm more confident in Nadia Voldy. Can you guys like Grinky? No. I'm just afraid that Grinky's going to get crushed. He's an innings eater if you get a big That's lead. That's why the Red Sox can actually win this series and go to the World Series. Yeah. Now they're going to lose because you, said, you that. said it perfectly. They're <laughs> similarly strong and similarly flawed. So it's kind of like whichever team out hits the other team. That's why. And the magic. The magic, the magic. though. Yeah. I, starting pitching, starting pitching lean, you would go where? Definitive, you're here. Boston. 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 Oh, bullpen. Boston. 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 Offense. Astros. 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 Defense. Oh, Astros, and it's <laughs> not even <laughs> really close. That's why that I'm worried be about factor. because the Astros are going to put a lot of balls in play, and this Red Sox team ranked dead last in outs above average, and they had two defensive runs saved uh, as a team. Th- How about that ground ball to Devers that he might boot or that ball in the gap that the outfitters can't get to? This, but the thing is, I said Alfred's can't get to. That's probably their strongest suit with Kike and Hunter Renfro out there. And Verdugo's good. Well, Renfro has a problem. I, he's addicted to throwing the ball as hard as he, he loves can. it. He's just like, <laughs> he's a pitcher no player. Like, I'm going to show everybody this can and have. He's, he's like locked in perfect game showcase mode. Yeah. <laughs> he's just like, I got to launch this thing as hard as I can and show everybody this can and I have for the D1 scouts yeah. here. Do you, think, like, do you think, like, low key, he goes back, like, he does little finger guns? He's like, that's right. <laughs> The one, the one where you're like, the, there was no play in the last game. Yeah, just and chucked just it. Chucks. It was actually so fast that ball. I know. It, I think he threw it 110 miles that's an hour. That's fine. It's the fastest ball I've ever seen. I swear to God, dude. Like, the game's going to be over. It's going to be like in the gap. When he runs scores, he's just going to run back there still. Like, they're already celebrating. He's just going to heave yeah. it in. Like, so, he, so let's talk because I think we, we, we've done a pretty good job of previewing. I want to talk game one yeah. about where we think it's going to go. Hold on. Before that, <laughs> we were very split. We were consensus split uh, on the four assets of the game yeah. that we initially highlighted. I want to throw another one in just for shits and gigs because I think this is going to be the slowest ALCS ever. Uh-huh. Foot speed wise. Who's got the advantage base running? Nobody's stealing a base yeah, in this, this ALCS. Both, I mean, they just wait for their home run. Who's fast? Another one. First of all, I don't even know where. Where do you lean there? Bobby Dalbeck was a pinch runner. <laughs> <laughs> just for context, he was a pinch runner. Manager. He actually moves a little bit, but like still. Manager. Would you rather have Dusty or would you rather have Cora? Cora, Cora, okay, Cora, Cora, I'd rather Cora. Cora too. I thought Dusty I, made some questionable decisions. He got bailed out by a sick team. Well, yeah, because yeah. Kyle Tucker is hitting seventh. Like, he, <laughs> I could be the manager. Okay, so the consensus is Cora has the managerial advantage. You just mentioned game one. Let's start with game one. Uh, you're ready to go split Scott on us. I'm ready to go split Scott. But let's just start with it's Chris Sale versus Frambois Valdez. Houston is at home and they opened up as minus 135 favorites. It's Chris Sale. Against Chris Sale. Boston is plus 125. I don't trust Sale. And here, here's I like to do my split stuff. I look at home road splits. I look at lefty righty matchups and I like to play the matchups. Let's start with Framber Valdez. He is better at, uh, he's better at on the road, but he's at home. I love when the splits I don't know, support, the split support the argument. He's like ready for the splits to help. <laughs> no, he's I, like, I actually read them wrong. Just uh, I was like, perfect. Uh, no, he's actually worse at home. Chris Sale, two runs worse in ERA on the road. Doesn't really matter. We could basically discount all of Chris Sale's because he's only thrown like eight 
separate times. Yeah. Red Sox, 30 points lower in OPS against left-handers okay. than right-handers. Houston, nine points OPS above against I, I don't nine, nine doesn't matter. I know. Well, they 781 versus 790. That's it's crazy. It's literally consistent. they crush everybody. Yeah. The Red Sox, 758 versus, eight, versus 788. That's... 788 OPS against righties, 758 against lefties. Framber Valdez, 14 innings, two earned runs against the Red Sox this year in two separate starts. Chris Sale has not faced the Astros this year. I have a question for you because I know you have some like Chris Sale allegiance and I, you know, he's a hall of famer, phenomenal career. He's probably going to be fine. Come next year. Regular season. Me why I love him so much. No, 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 no. I am going to not bet. So bet. Yeah. Like, but not actually, not, not gambling advice yeah. on, on the Astros Great. in that game. I have zero faith in Chris Sale. He got, he looked terrible his first outing. Yeah. I trust Chris Sale right now. And this is just right now. I think he's gonna be fine next year. I trust Chris Sale less with a baseball in his hand right now than a pair of scissors. Oh. Oh. You hear that? You hear the scissors thing? I didn't get that, really. <laughs> that was his swan song in Chicago. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. chopping up the jersey. You remember him snipping oh! up the jersey. Oh! It's a good joke. <laughs> it's a good joke. Damn it. That's it. my he fault. Got it. That's, ah, uh, <laughs> uh, dang it. I should have been there for that one. He splits God. He's it just wasn't funny for him. Listen, I was too focused on OPS. Speaking of splits God, uh, I'm a big fan of day in the day of the week splits. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not a big fan. <laughs> on Tuesdays. <laughs> on Tuesdays. Make fun of the splits all Valdez. you want. They show. You you bro. joke about it. He's going to do that to us. <laughs> I'm going to. he's going to do that to us. Listen, I hit. I, I do like day night. Day night matters to me because that is I day night home road left right. Those are the three splits that I care about. Uh, day of the week, I'm a big fan of looking at for just laughing <laughs> for purposes. Humor. Yeah, for humor. Um, also by count, I think by count is hilarious. Like a guy, a guy's walk rate with a three zero count, yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not good. Wait, yeah. you you um, want a good one? How about eye color? <laughs> so players with blue eyes tend to hit worse in day games. That's actually because they actually don't combat the light as well. Wow. Look at Josh Ham well actually that's a bad example. I was gonna say look at Josh Hamilton's day game numbers, but there might be some other factors right. into that. But I think there are other baseball players with blue but eyes. But there's a, that don't hit well. No, but Josh yeah. Hamilton has some of the most dramatic day night splits I've ever seen. Really? And he actually I think has gone on record saying like it is about the eyes. Like a lot of players with light eyes wear sunglasses to, to combat the light. Oh. Um, so I never go bright blue eyes in my DraftKings lineups for day games. Don't do it. Take that as a pointer. Unless they're a that? sunglasses guy. Unless they're a sunglasses that? guy. Chris Bryant during the daytime, if he's wearing the shades, he does, do it. He does, he does wear, the, wear the shades. Why does he wear the shades? He wouldn't want to hide those gorgeous eyes. No. He's but he has eyes. to. He has to. So getting back to Astros Red yeah, Sox. Yeah. The over-under is eight. It's going to probably go over. Over. Over here. But the thing is, I'm worried Framber actually turns in a pretty good start against. The, I don't think he goes more than five, though. Maybe six. Like that. I, yeah. I, you know what I'm saying? It's not like a regular season Rest game where they're Houston stretching him to seven. That total somewhat scares me. I if the feeling says over, when the feeling is so strong on an over, you got to look back and just say, is it really going over? Yeah. But it might go over. Yeah. Hey, Will Cohen told you to look into the camera when ah. you were making a point, and you did a great and job. And now he's like, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. I hope the mic picked up that. <laughs> uh, listen, what I brought up to you, Pete, before we started recording was Framber Valdez is one of the two best ground ball pitchers yep. in baseball. He and Logan Webb, the two best ground ball pitching starting pitchers in the game. Logan Webb, obviously dynamite against the Dodgers in game one. This is going to come out after Logan Webb sees the Dodgers the second time around. The Red Sox are a really good home run hitting team. They're really good when they get the ball in the air. True. If Framber Valdez keeps the ball lower half and he gets a lot of ground balls, we just said they're slow as shit yeah. as a team. Who knows what happens there? And there are your concerns. There are your concerns. What if Framber Valdez puts together six innings of one run ball? Yeah. Then what do we do now? Sale, I, I actually don't think he can do that. I don't think he has the capability. I don't see Sale coming out for a fifth inning. In any world do I see Chris Sale coming out for a fifth inning. That's interesting. I think Cora almost made you an say that job. You say yeah. that and it sounds crazy, but it probably is what's going to happen. Yeah. Maybe not fifth, but I don't think he's entering a sixth. I don't Maybe think, Chris, Sale, I don't think Chris Sale's going five. I don't, I don't, I don't think. think so. 
I think four max. So what I think is going to happen, I think the Astros are going to win game one. I think the Red Sox will win game two. Ivaldi, I think, is a huge advantage yes. for us. Against yeah. Luis Garcia, Garcia, for sure. Red Sox are going to win that and game. And Garcia's the type of dude I feel like they'll, 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 they'll tee off on. He's they'll not as much him. of a ground ball. That guy. game, yeah. So And then now it's 1-1. Are we going to keep slandering Erod? Come on, give it to me. No, Erod, we'll give it up to Erod. Erod had a great start okay. in his last start. Yeah. But I'm just, I'm just, I am not confident that he can do the same against an Astros offense. Okay. I'm just not. Arm first, then you, Pete. Game one score prediction, and then who wins how many games? Love it. Arm first. Game one score prediction. Oof. I'm going to go 6-3 Red Sox. Okay. And keep going with your... Uh, now what? What was this? Now, now you're your you're, <laughs> you're winner and how many games? Oh, God. Uh, I wasn't ready for that now, one. You gotta go, uh, we got to go on Woo! record with yeah, all of this our is, predictions. I'm going to like come back tomorrow and be like, wait, why did I say that? I don't <laughs> yeah. like that one anymore. Um, on, on the spot here, obviously, if I have game one going to the Sox, or going to the... Astros, excuse me. Why did I say that? I said 6-3 six, three, uh, six, six, three three Astros. Astros. You said 6-3 Red Sox. I know. That was, that was me being an idiot. I said I meant 6-3 Astros because I don't right. trust Chris Sale. Why right. did I say Red Sox? Red Sox take game two. So it's 1-1. One, one. I'm going to say I'm gonna say the Red Sox freaking do it. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to suck. Ast- Astros, I think, take them to seven. I'm going to say Red Sox and seven. The magic the magic comes through for, for the Red Sox. Sorry for the misspeak. Again, I'm just out of it today. Uh I'm going to say Astros and... Or, Jesus! Red Sox and seven. It's because I'm here. I yeah. am so... He's nervous. I'm so hot. Yeah, it's It a was hot not every thing. day you get to see a, a fa- hot thing. You get to see a famous Fortnite, Fortnite streamer. streamer. Yes. Nick yeah. EH30 or whatever. I need to meet Nick EH30. I'm like, that's I'm biggest, shaking. That's the best thing going on on our TikTok right now. It is. The Nick EH30 and, and not gambling advice have a podcast. So, I don't know they why. They don't know either of our names. <laughs> not gambling advice. So, I'm sorry I can't speak. Not gambling advice in the Fortnite streamer. So, let me try again. Red Sox in seven. Okay. Okay. I'm in a precarious situation. Because. Big word. Because. Red Sox fans don't really like me right now. And I continue to pick against their team. Is this the time where I jump on the Red Sox oh, bandwagon? Oh, they'll hate you. And then they'll hate me. Chips in. This is right when you put the chips in. And then in. they'll hate me. So... I'm a Yankee fan, and I don't know if I like them that much either. I'm putting my chips in on the Astros. I'm going Astros in seven. I actually do think it's going to be really close. I'm going Astros in seven, and then Verlander might pitch an inning in game seven. Somehow <laughs> he might come back. No, but he he's actually out for the series. But I think the Astros in game seven at home, they got it. Cohen, your roommates with Peter here in New York because you have to have roommates, right? I had a studio apartment in Fort Wayne because it was very cheap, and New York is not very cheap at all. Not really. Uh, we're going to make a Yankee swear jar over the offseason yes. where every time he drops the Y word on the podcast, he's got to throw in a buck. Um, Should we talk about Aaron Judge? <laughs> at- <laughs> we did a mailbag. <laughs> And Peter Peter compiled the questions. I think it was ten questions. Three of them were Yankees questions. Hey, well they asked them. They asked them. It wasn't even freaking me. They, they're asking. Them. I'm uh, gonna put them on. I want to answer Yankee questions. Well, and then at least five responses were: Is it actually gambling advice or no? Yeah, and that's mostly what it is. <laughs> right. I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> it's not. It's not. Uh, okay. Astros take game one, seven to five. Okay. High scoring. Oh, I didn't even give my game one prediction. Oh. I got what is it? Six four. Astros. Okay. Red so, Sox. Astros. Six four Astros. I've got I've got seven five Astros. I've got Red Sox in six. And Ooh, as boring as this wow. sounds, wow. there are going to be heroic long relief appearances. There will be. That's that's the least sexy thing I've ever said about postseason baseball. Heroic long relief. Zach Ranky's gonna have one. No, I'm saying for the Red Sox. On uh, both sides. God, Zach Ranky might go six shutout. Do you out think? Out of the pen. Zach Greinke over under 62 and a half miles per hour on his slowest pitch to end the pod. Faster. Should we give a, I was going to say thank you everybody as we end it, but we should give our social thing. Hold on. Yeah, we'll do the social thing. First and foremost, this was awesome being able to put my hand on Pete's Look at you. and tap Aram and tell him that I, I love your takes. 
And I love your eyes, too. You wouldn't be able to play well in day games. <laughs> no, I, no, thank you. I appreciate that. Also, can we talk about one of the other... You, you get the, the Nick EH trend. People just tell me I wear makeup. Nah, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great, I, I, Like, I'm not wearing... Like, what am I going to say? I'm not wearing makeup. Like, I, I, can't, I can't defend that. <laughs> but I'm not. Like, I'm you not. You do a TikTok soon where you actually are in full eye makeup and just not even acknowledge it. And then when people comment, be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, what? What do you mean? Like, this is what makeup like, really looks yeah, like, bro. It's like, dude, your eyelids are literally blue. I put it on <laughs> just to show you what it really looks like, Okay. Oh, we, we don't even have to give the we don't even have to give the social stuff. We've talked enough. People know where to find us, right? They're all in the description. Everything I've said has been off anyway. Right now, <laughs> if I did the socials, I would butcher the whole thing. I can't speak right now. Thank you, everybody.